Okay, this question, Asnar Wood Limited, came from the ACCN4 paper in June 2017, and it's an absolute stinker. It is looking at the um, differences essentially between absorption costing and marginal costing. Um, so, yeah, there's quite a lot to consider here, really. Uh, we've got some information about the um, pricing structure, so what it sells for, direct materials cost, labour, variable overheads. Um, some figures here for the forecast sales and forecast production. Now, if you remember when we do marginal costing, there's no issue. Um, it assumes one of the problems with marginal costing is it assumes everything we make, we sell. But if we look here, you can see that they clearly haven't sold everything that they've made. The production in July is considerably higher. It's extra 70 units made above the sales level. Um, whereas in August, actually, it's 70 units fewer. So by the time we get to the end of August, there won't be any inventory. There's no inventory at the start, but there is some inventory of, of units between July and August. We've got some additional information about the fixed overheads. Now, this is one thing we need to be careful of. It tells us the fixed overheads are per annum. So we would need to divide, divide that by 12 to come up with the monthly figure. So this is another thing they often do in management accounting is give you annual figures when actually you need monthly figures. So don't be tripped up by that. Um, it tells us that the fixed overheads are um, absorbed on the basis of direct labour hours. And we can see here that um, in terms of direct labour, it's £12 an hour. So we actually have five hours per unit. So that's the basis we're going to be using to absorb the overheads. Um, the production forecast is for 6,000 units per annum, which is 500 units um, per month. OK, so um, the labour hours per month, let's just work that out while we're here. So it's 500 um, units times five hour is 2,500 labour hours per month. So if we divide that £8,000 of overheads per month by 2,500 labour hours, that's going to give us an overhead absorption rate, 8,000 divided by 2,500 of £3.20 Per labor hour okay so we'll come back to that in a little um, and then the last piece of information here the directors forecast there will be no inventory of finished goods at the 1st of July 2017 so the opening inventory here is going to be zero but the closing inventory in July because we've sorry it's a bit wonky because we've produced 520 units but we've only sold 450 we've actually got 70 units in stock that's going to become opening inventory um, at the end, at the beginning of August, sorry. Um, so we've got 70 units plus the 410 that we've made is 480 units, and that's the same as we've sold. So there's no closing inventory. And what we're asked to do is prepare budgeted income statements for each of the months, July 2017 and August 2017, using absorption costing. So remember, with absorption costing, we are including the fixed overheads as part of the production cost. So we're going to do normal layout for an income statement. We'll start with the sales. But instead of cost of sales, we'll have cost of production. We'll need to adjust for that closing inventory at the end of July. That's going to become the opening inventory at the end of August. Now, although we're giving it in units, when we're doing an income statement, obviously it needs to be in monetary amounts. So we're actually given a nice little layout here, um, some boxes to fill in. So let's start with the sales figure then. So sales is going to be based on the number of units sold. So it's units sold, let's just write this. So sales units times the selling price, which is 160 pounds, okay? So in July, the selling price doesn't change, it's 160, but we are selling forecast units in sales, they're 450, 450 units. So the sales figure is 72,000. In August, we've sold 400, or we're planning to sell 480 units, also at 160 pounds. So we've got 76,800 pounds worth um, of sales there. Okay, so that's the sales sorted out. Then we're gonna do the cost of production. Okay, now we haven't got any opening inventory at the start, but let's put opening inventory in there. So opening inventory, is zero at the start. Now let's start looking at the cost of um, the cost of production. Now because it's production, we're going to be producing 520 units in July 
and 410 units. So don't pick up the sales figure and start multiplying everything by the sales units. You need the production units because this is the cost of production. So we've got direct material and that's going to be £50 per unit. So let's multiply £50 by the number of units produced. So £50, my calculator sorted here, £50 times 520 units produced in July is £26,000. And then £50 times the 410 units produced in August is £20,000. 500 okay i haven't sorted out the opening inventory we'll do that in a little while when we stacked everything else up the direct labor is 60 pounds per unit remember it was um five hours at 12 pounds an hour so 60 pounds a unit again times the production um figures so 60 times 520 is 31,200. And 60 multiplied by the 410 units is 24,600. Okay, we can then do the same with the variable, variable overheads. So it tells us here that they are eight pounds per unit. So eight pounds times by the 520 that we're producing in July, 4,160. And eight pounds times the 410 is 3,280 in August. Okay, now we've got to sort out the fixed overheads. So the fixed overheads will work out an amount per unit. So the fixed overheads, um, remember it was £3.20 per labour hour. We worked out down here and it's five labour hours per unit. So it's £16 per unit there. So again, we're going to multiply that up by the production units. So 520 in July times £16 means that we're absorbing eight thousand three hundred and twenty pounds worth of overheads remember that the um the forecast overheads are actually eight thousand pounds sorry that should be per month um not per annum so eight thousand pounds per month and we've absorbed 320 pounds more so we've got an over absorption which we'll deal with in a little while um the fixed overheads for august 410 units times 16 pounds 6560 being absorbed there against this £8,000 forecast. So we're actually going to end up with an underabsorption there of 1440 But again, that will come after we've worked out the, uh, the gross profit. We'll do an adjustment after that. Okay, so the last thing we need to work out then is the closing inventory. Now, we've already worked out that we're going to have 70 units left in stock at the end of July, and we need to value those at the full production cost, including the fixed overheads. So the full production cost per unit is 50 plus 60, plus eight, plus 16. So it's going to be 134 pounds per unit. Okay, times 70, because that's how many we've got left. So the value of our closing inventory at the end of July is going to be 9,380. And that automatically comes in as opening inventory at the start of August. And remember, there's no inventory at the end of August. We don't need to worry about that. Okay, so what we can do now then is work out the cost of production for each month. So 26,000, 31,200, 4160, 8320, 9380, 60,300 there. Okay, so that's going to give us a gross profit for July, get that away, of 11,700. And then for August, 9380. I'm a bit shadowy today. I don't know what's up with the light. Um, 24600, 3280, 6560, 64320. And then a gross profit of £12,480. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is sort out the overall underabsorption. So remember, we're comparing the fixed overheads that we've actually absorbed with what we plan to absorb. So in July, we've actually got an overabsorption. It's the 8320 that we've absorbed up here, minus the 8000 means that we've absorbed an extra 320. And an overabsorption is good for profit. So, profit after adjustment is actually going to be 11700 plus the 320 is going to be 12020. But actually, for August, we've got an underabsorption. Absorbed 6560 against 8000, and that's because we only made um, 410 units. We plan to make 
um, 500 units. So remember that each unit we make, we're absorbing 16 pounds worth of overhead. So the shortfall there is 90 times 16 pounds. That's how we get to this 1440, this difference. And because it's an underabsorption, that's actually going to reduce our profit. So we take that away from the 12480. So that gives us a profit of 11.040. Okay, so that's the first part of the question done. Let me just put that into the lights so that you can, you can see it. Now it tells us that the directors have calculated the profit for July 2017 using marginal costing would be 10,900. Now this is for July. We've actually got 12,020. Now the difference is, so 12020 minus 10,900 is 1,120 pounds. Okay, so this difference is going to be to do with the closing inventory. So the fact that we've got 70 units of closing inventory at the end of July, and each one contains 16 pounds worth of fixed overhead. Now, if we were doing this as marginal costing, remember the fixed overheads would come down after the gross profit. It wouldn't be included in there. So therefore, the inventory valuation would be lower by £16 a unit. So £70, 70 pounds times 16 is 1,120. That is actually the difference. So the way we can lay this out, then it's only worth a couple of marks, not worth worrying about too much. Um, but the marginal cost profit is 10,900. Um, the fixed overheads included in inventory at the end of July is 70 units times 16 pounds, which is 1,120. If we add the two together, we get the absorption cost profit there. 10,900 is 12020. So just to reiterate then why there is that that difference, that 1120, if we increase the value of closing inventory to include overheads, remember if you increase inventory, you increase the value of the asset, you also increase um, the gross profit. And the reason for that is inventory at the end of the month is deducted, so the deduction is larger, therefore the cost of sales, or in this case the cost of production is lower, which leads to a higher gross profit. Um, but thanks very much for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe.